I was busy with the patients. So um, I suppose to talk about the prenatal screening and diagnostic tests. Uh, before we start the talk, uh, just simple question. Um, anyone just give me an idea what is the difference between prenatal, sc the screening and diagnostic test? What we mean by screening test, what we mean by diagnostic test? What is the difference? Screening, we are identifying the high risk mm -hmm. uh, fetus. Uh, diagnostic, uh, we are diagnosing a condition uh, with the baby, with the fetus. Yeah, so why we are not going immediately to the diagnostic test? Why we, why we start with screening? Because we, uh, we have the whole, yani the whole population with the screening, uh -huh. but who will be at the high risk? These people that are, uh, uh, they, they can go for the diagnostic. So yeah, this is one, one, yes, this is one of the answers, but what is the important answer? Why we are going for screening? Why we, we not offer all the women diagnostic tests and just, because diagnosis will give you 100% answer, yes? Because the screening will just give you probability. Yes, because yeah. uh -huh. the diagnostic test is telling uh, a risk of uh, pregnancy loss. Yes. Procedure. Uh, yeah, this is one of the reasons. Uh -huh. And Any, also it will be for specific condition diagnostic test, maybe uh -huh. that family high, have a condition with that problem, so the specific only, the uh -huh. diagnostic test. Uh -huh. But the screening will be like overall. Okay, and? What other reason? The screening through it, we can detect the cases which is not known before. Screening, as Salwa, she said, it will just uh, classify whether the patient is at high risk or low group, low risk. But the most important regarding diagnostic test, it is invasive test, there is risk of miscarriage, and it is expensive. So we cannot go for, I mean, from the cost effective uh, point, it is better to start with screening and then to go for diagnostic test, okay? So in, in my talk, I will, I will discuss the current guideline regarding the prenatal screening and diagnostic tests internationally and what is available here in Oman. And then we'll uh, talk about the importance of accurate clinical information when we offer the patient the screening and diagnostic test. The most important things is to uh, know uh, the demographic data of the patient and her history, her background, and then we discuss with her uh, the screening and diagnostic tests. And then from your uh, side, we will talk more about the importance of counseling. When you discuss with such patient and when you offer them the screening or any diagnostic test, the most important is the counseling, okay? So ideally, every pregnant woman should have the most definite test, and the most definite uh, test is diagnostic test. But of course, practically, it is, it is not practical to uh, offer all the patient diagnostic tests. First of all, it is expensive. Secondly, it is invasive test, okay? And this is why they start with the screening test, and then if the screening test show that the patient is high risk, then you need to counsel the patient regarding the diagnostic test. And I say, uh, as I said, the screening procedures are simple procedure, are cheap, least invasive, and safe and easily to repeat uh, the screening test. But for the invasive test, it's not easy to repeat the invasive test, okay? Uh, internationally, one of the general principles regarding the prenatal uh, screening um, worldwide, all the women should be offered screening tests. Here in Oman, we don't have screening tests. And simply because we don't consider Down syndrome as a very serious problem. Um, from the culture and from the family and social support, they don't consider Down syndrome as a problem that they need to get rid of it. So uh, the purpose from a screening test is to screen for a condition you want to get rid of it. But if we don't consider Down syndrome as a condition that we need to get rid of it, then no purpose to start screening program uh, in the area that you work. Internationally in, in Europe and in uh, America, they consider Down syndrome one of the conditions that they want to get rid of it. So this is why for them screening is very important. Okay? So there all the women should have screening test. In Oman here, we don't have screening test. But if the woman, for example, had a previous baby with Down syndrome, so she had experience, 
and she know what is Down syndrome. She will come to you and she will say, Doctora, I want, I don't want screening test, I want diagnostic test now. I want to know if this baby have Down syndrome or not. So that it depends on her background. And of course, when you discuss this issue with her, you need to know her perception. You need to know what she will do if she know that this baby have Down syndrome. What, what is the difference for her to know during pregnancy what is the, she can wait and she know it after delivery. So you need to know all these issues with her, you need to discuss it. And you need also the most important point, you need to discuss with her that here in Oman we are not terminating Down syndrome babies. So it is her, of course, it is her right to know antenatally whether the baby is Down syndrome or not. But if she want to terminate the pregnancy, she can go outside. So. So we need to respect her um, decision that she wants to know antenatally whether the baby is affected or not, okay? And when you start any screening test, you should have the next step, which is the diagnostic test. So if the screen is positive, then you need to counsel the patient about the diagnostic test. If the test is negative, it doesn't mean 100% that the baby is completely healthy and fine because screening, it screens certain condition but not the whole genetic and chromosomal anomalies. So when you discuss with the mothers these issues, especially in private, in private they have screening tests. So when they, suppose when they discuss this issue, they should mention that this screening test is for this condition. When it is negative, it doesn't mean that this baby is healthy. So she needs to go through all other uh, screening procedure, which is including the scan, okay? So to have it or not to have it, it depends on many factors. And that factors affect the decision, and that is very important to know it when you counsel the mother. The faith, the religious of the patient, her values, her perception about the, the condition that you want to screen for her. The family support is very important. The social background, the culture, the religion, all these affecting the decision of the patient. One of the patients, she will say, uh, she, she will come to you and she said, my mother, she was pregnant when she was 45 and she had a healthy baby. So what is the difference between me and my mother? So all these issues, you need to discuss it with her. Uh, past experience with the condition. As I said, if the patient has a brief dis disabled baby or baby with some genetic syndrome, of course she understands what is that genetic syndrome. And she will come herself to you and she will tell you, Doctora, I want to be screened or I want to have a diagnostic test for this condition because I want to decide whether to continue this pregnancy or to terminate this pregnancy. Okay? Oh, what happened? Sorry. Okay, so during counseling, you need to know all these factors to help the mother to make her decision, okay? I will not go through all of them. Um, as I said, woman perception is very important and the family role is also very important. And she should know that prenatal screening test is not just only blood test. There are a lot of, fa of, of consequences for that test. If the test is positive, then she, she should know that it, this means that she is high risk for that condition. She should know that the next test is to over her invasive test, and there is risk of miscarriage with the invasive test. So she will not feel guilt when miscarriage happens, okay? So you should prepare the mother for all these uh, consequences. And it is very important to discuss with the mother um, about uh, the condition that she want to screen. For example, if you want to screen for Down syndrome, as I said, she should understand what it means for her Down syndrome. Does it make any difference to know antenatally or post delivery? And if she know antenatally, whether she will terminate of the pregnancy or she will continue the pregnancy. So all these factors you need to discuss it with the mother before going for screening and diagnostic test. And of course, the screening and diagnostic test, they have a lot of benefits. The most important benefit, if the mother, the screening test is negative, the mother will be reassured and she will enjoy her pregnancy. But if it is positive, then at least she will prepare herself psychologically and socially. She will go and read about the condition. Both her and her husband, they will prepare themselves to, to, to accept or to, to, to terminate the pregnancy, okay? And for the doctors, if the condition is lethal condition like an encephaly or 
your uh, body stock anomaly, then um, the, the obstetrician, they will decide that the mother, she, she, the priority is for the mother. So if the, le the, the lethal condition have any risk on the mother uh, health, then they need to decide whether to terminate the pregnancy, uh, whether to label the fetus not for monitoring, so that they will not expose the mother for the risk of cesarean section and all the complication of cesarean section. Okay, and if the condition that they they, they screen for, like for example, spina bifida, and they found that the fetus have spina bifida or have exomphalus, then at least antenatally they can send the patient for a tertiary hospital where the condition can be managed either antenatally or post-delivery, okay? So these are the benefits of offering the mother screening and diagnostic test. And that is very important during counseling. For example, the mother, she will come to you and she will say, um, why you want to screen for spina bifida? Why you want to do scan to exclude uh, structural anomaly? You need to discuss this issue with some condition can be treated antenatally, like fetal anemia can be treated in utero with blood transfusion. Some condition can be treated antenatally like hydrothorax, we can put a shunt, we can do aspiration. So all these issues you need to discuss it with the mother. Postnatally, if it is like intestinal obstruction, baby will need immediate surgery. So if she is from Ibri, this baby ideally should be delivered in Royal Hospital where the surgeon are available to do immediate surgery for the baby. Okay. Sorry, I didn't stand to, uh, I thought sitting with you it's better, huh? totally forgot. <laughs> so these are the major structural anomaly that, and chromosomal anomaly that we can screen for. Um, the chromosomal abnormality that we can screen for it is trisomy 21, trisomy 18, trisomy 13. Um, structural anomalies, CNS anomalies like anencephaly, hydrocephalus, uh, holoprosencephaly, all these major structural anomaly can be detected as early as 12 weeks. Uh, cardiovascular anomalies, uh, the most common congenital anomaly is the congenital cardiac defect and congenital cardiac de defect can be detected as early as 12 weeks and it is very important for the mother because there is certain cardiac anomaly which is associated with poor prognosis and if you detect it early like hypoplastic left heart syndrome, if you detect it as early as 12 weeks then the mother have the option whether she want to continue the pregnancy or terminate the pregnancy, especially if she have some obstetric problem that continuation of the pregnancy is not advised for the mother, okay? GIT anomalies like oxomphalus intestinal obstruction, it will help you to plan the uh, antenatal follow-up and also to plan the delivery of the patient. Bone anomalies, lethal skeletal anomalies, especially lethal skeletal anomalies which associated with hydrops fetalis. It's very important to detect it and you can detect it as early as 12 weeks. And it's important also to decide whether to continue the pregnancy or to terminate the pregnancy. Here in Oman, we are not terminating all the condition. But if it is lethal condition or it affects the mother life, then yes, we can terminate the pregnancy. Okay? Hydrops fetalis, yes, you will terminate the pregnancy, especially if the mother, she had previous baby with hydrops fetalis and she ended with cesarean section. So you, want, you don't want her to have another experience of cesarean section. Especially nowadays, we have a lot of placenta, accreta, and percreta, where the mother, she can lose her life. Alhamdulillah, mm -hmm. our, our religion, it's not that, you know. Um, renal anomalies, uh, like um, polycystic uh, kidneys. Polycystic kidneys can be detected as early as 12 weeks. So if a patient have fetus with polycystic kidney, and it will end with anhydramnios, and it is lethal condition. Anhydramnios, then she will end with uh, obstructive labor, or uh, you, it will end with cesarean section. We need to counsel the mother, yeah? And we need to look to all the risk factors. If it is in take indicated from the maternal side to, to terminate the pregnancy, yes, you can terminate the pregnancy. But if the mother, she is low risk, and she doesn't have risk, um, we should also balance our, from our religion point of view, okay? Genetic disorder, there is some gene which is already identified. If the gene mutation and the mother she had previous baby affected and she want to know whether this fetus is affected also, we can do chorionic villus sampling as early as, early as 11 weeks. And if the fetus is affected and it is a lethal condition, then uh, the mother, she can opt for termination of pregnancy either here or outside the country, okay? So, can you tell me about this uh, next test or test that you 
No, no, we don't consider it lethal, but some women, they want to know whether this pregnancy is affected or not. If it is like, for example, sickle cell disease, and for her, psychologically, she wants to know whether this fetus is affected or not. And she has also the option, if she wants to terminate the pregnancy, in some country they terminate the pregnancy, it is up to her, yani, if she wants. But here in Oman, we should tell her before doing CVS that, yes, I will do your for you CVS, for you to know because that is your 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 uh, I mean uh, that is one of her right to know if the baby is affected or not, but she should know that we are not terminating for sickle cell disease and we are not terminating um, unless like for example thalassemia and the fetus is already hydrobic that is yeah. totally different story yeah. So now we'll talk about the screening. We have uh, many screening tests. The most important screening test is the history. When you start with the mother, start with the history. History will affect other, the result of other screening uh, tests. One of the, his, uh, the, the important factor is maternal age. We know yani, one, of the uh, one of the things that uh, the older the, the, the lady, the more risk that she will get a baby with Down syndrome. <clears throat> but all women are at risk of Down syndrome. Okay. Congenital anomalies in preface baby, if the baby, if the, she, her, her preface child had congenital cardiac defect, she have more risk that the future, in future pregnancy she have a baby with congenital cardiac defect. And that is important. So you can offer the patient early scan. If, for example, the preface baby have hypoplastic left heart syndrome, then uh, at 12 weeks we can detect hypoplastic left heart syndrome, okay? Uh, briefest history of stillbirth. Um, briefest history of stillbirth is important uh, because it depends on what is the cause of that stillbirth. If it is, for example, uh, hydrops fetalis, you can detect it as early as 12 weeks. Um, stillbirth can be caused by many factors. 50% you may not know the fa what is the cause, okay? But if the cause is already identified, then yes, you can offer her. And anyway, in general, all patients with brief stillbirth should have early anomaly scan as early as 12 weeks, okay? Recurrent first trimester abortion. If the, fa if, if the cause of the recurrent first trimester abortion is known or it is not known, still you need to offer her close fetal and maternal monitoring, okay? Cousin marriage. Relative marriage, they put them at higher risk of genetic syndromes. Okay. Yeah. Ideally, ideally, we should store, we should do DNA storing, whether from the the products of the previous pregnancy, or from the current pregnancy, and then do DNA analysis. But here we don't do it and that is because of the cost. Yeah. Um, for DNA storage, previously I was sending to France and then when I looked to the cost for the yearly you need to, um, what is this, to pay the fees for the, for the, for the storage. Yeah. And in most, in majority of the cases you don't have an answer. So I requested um, Dr. Anna and Dr. Musalem if we can do DNA storage here for certain families. Some families, they have four affected previous pregnancies with like, for example, uh, skeletal uh, dysplasia or uh, fetal echinacea deformation sequence. And this, uh, but you need to tell the mother when you counsel them that even if they go, as Dr. Rahma, she said, if you, even if they go for pre, uh, BGD testing, it doesn't mean that they will get a healthy baby. First, because of the cost, because of the failure rate, and it is not guaranteed that the, 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 the fetus the, or the embryo will be a healthy fetus, okay? So, yeah, you need to counsel the mother, you need to discuss all these issues. Don't give them just a hope which is... No, I'm, I'm, no, we are not, um, unless يعني, for certain conditions, like I told you, for 
uh, fetal echinacea and the patient she had previous four babies with fetal echinacea. I don't know, Hani, uh, Rahma, if you are doing in your recurrent pregnancy, um, do you offer them DNA storage? We don't offer them. We don't have them. Yeah. I mean, I have families who are asking for that. Mm. And they go by their own cost. Yeah. But uh, we don't have them. Yeah, that is a problem, yeah. Yani. We ha unfortunately, we have limited facilities, and you cannot store DNA in outside the country and you continue paying, yeah, with no answer. Also for the hydrox, because recurrent hydrox, do you for, for certain conditions, yes, we do DNA storage, but till now, unfortunately, I didn't get any answer for any babies. For hydrox. For hydrox, yeah. I got some, some answers where amniotic fluid, they did enzymatic analysis, and they found that this pregnancy is because of some metabolic inborn errors. But for DNA storage till now, I didn't. I had one, one uh, sorry, I had one patient whom I did DNA and they found an answer, but I couldn't trace the family. Mm. Unfortunately, they changed all the contacts, so I couldn't trace them. Yeah. Uh, features of current pregnancy, we need to, 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 to have detailed history about the drug intakes. Like for example, if the mother, she's on anti-epileptic drugs, then you need to uh, screen her for cardiac and neural tube defects. Um, alcohol and smoking will affect also the blood results. If you are doing for this mother screening test based on the biochemical test, the alcohol and smoking, it will affect the results of the biochemical test. Uh, radiation exposure, if the mother she had CT or CT scan, especially pelvic CT scan, um, you need to have detailed history when she had that CT scan, as early as how many weeks. And then you need to counsel her about the risk of having a baby, uh, affected baby. And even if the fetus doesn't show any anomalies, it might affect the growth of the baby. She might have ended with intrauterine fetal death. So all these issues, you need to discuss it with the mother. Uh, maternal chronic diseases like diabetic, if the mother, she have pre-gestational diabetic like type one diabetic and she, she conceived when she was on insulin, then she's more at risk of having a fetuses with cardiac anomalies, sacral, uh, what is this, neural tube anomalies sacral agencies, so you need to do detailed anomaly scan for them at 12 weeks and you repeat it at 22 weeks. Uh, decreased fetal movement, fetal malpresentation, viral infection in early pregnancy, all these is affect the fetal well-being and the fetal growth and um, the outcome of the pregnancy. The other screening test is biochemical test. And biochemical test, there is certain um, biochemical marker that can be uh, checked as early as 12 weeks. And these can be used with the scan to assess the risk that this mother, the risk of the chromosomal anomalies, especially Down syndrome, trisomy 18, trisomy 13. So we have biochemical markers, we can offer it in the third trimester. If she come late after 16 weeks, there is what is called the triple test and quadruple test or integrated uh, test, which can be offered after 16 weeks. Here we don't, as I told you, we don't do screening. We don't have a national screening program because uh, first of all, as I told you, we don't terminate for Down syndrome. Secondly, for lethal malformation, still from the religious point of view, it is not that clear. So we are waiting for the fatwa to come from the authorities. We can use the scan to screen for structural anomalies and for chromosomal anomalies, yes. And we can do scan as early as 11 weeks. We can check the nuchal translucency. I, and I will talk with you what we mean, what we mean by uh, knuckle thickness. At 20 weeks, we can do structural survey to check for any structural anomalies. And the detection rate is almost like 75%. This is uh, from Fetal Medicine Foundation. Uh, previously, um, they were using the maternal age to decide whether to go for the invasive test or not for Down syndrome. But they found that when they use maternal age, they will expose almost like 30% of pregnant lady for invasive test. And the detection rate is only 50%. So this is why they moved to what is called the combined test. And what we mean by combined test, they combine the scan, the nuchal scan, 
with the biochemical markers and maternal age. And they found when they use, when they go with such approach, the detection rate increased to 95% with 5% fault positive rate. Okay. And this is what is go going in the internationally, in UK, I mean in Europe and in North America. All pregnant women, they offer, him, they offer them screening test at 11 weeks, and if she is high risk, then they will go for the invasive test. And they use the combined test. Biochemical markers, which include beta-SCG and uh, PAPE, which is pregnancy-associated plasma protein A, with the nuchal scan and with the age of the mother. And of course, with, in the software, they will include all the demographic data of the patient, the obesity, her age, ethnic background, if she have diabetic, uh, if she had other conditions, because all this will affect the calculation of the risk. What I mean by nuclear translucency, uh, do we have uh, Dr. Musallam? Anyway, it's fine. The nuchal translucency, what we mean by the nuchal translucency is the fluid collection. You see here, some, this is the fluid collection under the skin behind the baby, behind the fetal neck. So these are, this is the nuchal translucency. And what we are doing, we are measuring the thickness of the nuchal translucency. We put the, we measure this, this distance. And if it is more than 2.5 millimeter, then the patient, she, she have, uh, the nuchal, she have increased nuchal translucency and then we need to do detailed survey for the looking for any structural anomaly in the fetus and we need to counsel the mother that she have high risk for chromosomal anomalies depending on her age and we can offer her um, more uh, specific and sensitive diagnostic test nowadays in private we don't have in ministry of health she can go for for what is called non-invasive uh, uh, test with uh, an IBT where they will take uh, maternal blood and they will check for cell-free fetal DNA. Uh, and uh, this is still a screening test, it is not a diagnostic test and she should understand the mother that uh, it is 99% the detection rate. So if it is positive, still she need to go for the invasive test, okay? It's available in the privates. Yeah, and I think we can also go through the genetic center. Um, the cost will be less. Yeah, but as I told you, it is a screening test; it's not a diagnostic test. It is it, 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 the detection rate is higher compared to the combined test. Combined test ninety five. This will give you ninety nine percent with less false positive rate. But still, if it is positive, then she still need to go for the screening. I mean, the diagnostic test. So uh, what is important for us is not the appearance of the nuchal translucency, but the size of the nuchal translucency. As I said, if it is increased, then the mother, she is more risk to having uh, fetuses with chromosomal and structural anomalies. The nuchal translucency, either it evolves to cause hydrops fetalis or cystic hygroma. And these are a fetus with hydrops fetalis and cystic hygroma. You can see the cystic hygroma behind the fetal head. And there is certain criteria. Not everybody can do nuchal translucency. Um, there is certain criteria to do nuchal translucency, and the sonographer should go for a training for minimum six months to be certified to do nuchal translucency. Uh, we do it when the fetus is 45 to 84 millimeter, yani 4 to, to 8 centimeter size fetus. And that is the fetus. Uh, uh, 45 to 84, and this is the nuchal translucency. And we should magnify the picture to include only the head, the, the, the mid sagittal view of the face and the thorax. And that is where we take the measurement of the nuchal translucency. The baby should not be in the hyperflex or high or extended um, position because it will give you false readings. Okay. This is very important when you counsel the mother. Yeah that um, nuchal translucency scan is not easy scan. It takes almost like half an hour because it depends on the fetal position. And at this stage, the fetus are very active. So you need to check the nuchal when the baby in the silent uh, sleeping uh, mode. <laughs> but not all the fetuses are in sleeping mode. So when there is increased nuchal translucency, there is more risk, as I said, for chromosomal anomaly. There is more risk of major structural anomaly, especially cardiac anomalies. 
skeletal anomalies and uh, when the fetus are more at risk of high drops fetalis. The pathophysiology, why the nuchal translucency increase when there is cardiac anomaly? When there is cardiac anomaly, there is more of venous uh, congestion. Yeah. Um, it happened also when the fetuses have risk of high drops because some of the high drops uh, fetalis, they have lymphatic draining obstruction. So there is increase in the nuchal translucency. Nuchal translucency can be associated with hypoproteinemia. It can be associated with fetal uh, viral infection. It be, can, can be associated with uh, skeletal anomaly when they have collagen disorder uh, defects. Two minutes. Huh? Two minutes. Two minutes? I should go fast. Um, this is the major structural anomaly that we can detect it antenatally, uh, like for example, anencephaly, uh, uh, what is this, exomphalus, uh, megacystis. This we can detect it as early as 12 weeks. This all 12 weeks anomaly scan. Spina bifida can be detected as early as 12 weeks. Holoprosencephaly, um, meningomyelocele, uh, not meningo, what is this, meningo, occipital meningocele can be detected as early as. Other screening tests, as I told you, maternal blood test. And maternal blood test, we can check for spina bifida using alpha feta protein. But also by the scan, we can detect. We talked about triple test. Triple test including alpha feta protein, beta CG, unconjugated estriol, and the detection rate is 60% only. And this is why nowadays they don't go for triple and quadruple test. They will go directly for the combined test. Mm -hmm. Quadruple test is the triple test with inhibin A. Uh, double test is, is used um, uh, during the first trimester um, 12 week scan. We talked about an IBT, and I told you an IBT is a screening test, it's not a diagnostic test, and detection rate is 99%. Counseling, we talked about the importance of the counseling when we offer the patient the screening and diagnostic test. Uh, diagnostic test, I will not go into details of diagnostic test, but we have chorionic villus sampling. Chorionic villus sampling can be done as early as 12 weeks, as early as 11, actually, as early as 11 weeks. And yes, it is invasive procedure. The mother, she should understand the risk of miscarriage. So you need to counsel all the, all these things. You need to uh, discuss with the mother risk of miscarriage so that she will not feel the, the guilt when the things happen, okay? And the risk of miscarriage is less than 1%. Alhamdulillah, till now we didn't have any patient with miscarriage, but the mother, she should understand this point, okay? Uh, the other test, if she come after 15 weeks, you need, you need um, to offer her amniocentesis if she's at high risk of chromosomal or any genetic or structural anomalies, okay? Uh, the other test that we can do it is chordocentesis, but chordocentesis is have more high risk of fetal loss, bleeding, and uh, miscarriage, okay? Fetal tissue biopsy and fetoscopy, uh, we don't do it here. We, we do chorionic villus sampling, we do amniocentesis, and we do uh, fetal blood sampling through the umbilical cord. This is just how we are doing. Amniocentesis, we do it under ultrasound guidance. And this is why the risk is less than one person, the risk of miscarriage. The indication, uh, the same as we discussed, and we do it after 15 weeks. Complications, uh, risk of fetal loss, miscarriage is 1%. Risk of infection, chorioaminitis is very, very low, less than 1 in 500. So it is unlikely. But you should do counsel the mother. If she feel fever or persistent abdominal pain, she should report to the emergency room. If the patient she is RH, RH negative, there is a risk of RH isomerization. So you need, after the procedure, you need to give her anti-D. Okay? Uh, we will not go into the details of these things. Um, we all discuss all these things. Uh, what else? We Yes. The most important things, when the screening test and diagnostic test give you a bad news, then you should be prepared how to counsel the mother, how to break the bad news. You should have the skill to convey the message to the mother. You should, be sim you should be sympathetic with the mother. Uh, you should be professional in your approach. And then you should have the options already uh, ready with you. The mother, she will tell you what is the next step. You, you are now telling me that 
I, uh, the screen is positive, or if the diagnostic test tells you that she is Down syndrome, what are the options? So you need to counsel the mother in detail. What does it mean for her a fetus is with Down syndrome? Does she want to continue the pregnancy? Does she want to terminate the pregnancy? And previously, you need to counsel the mother whether termination is uh, prohibited or from the religious point of view, okay? That's it. Thank you. <laughs> Any question? Mafi question? Okay.